Well, hello everyone, my name is Brenda Ray and I'm a peer advisor for the Swanson Schools of Engineering's Global Experiences and Engagement Office and I am joined here with Tom and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself and specifically his roles, his role within the nationality rooms and intercultural exchange programs here at Pitt. Take it away, Hi Tom. Brenda, thank you for having me here. Uh, let me step back one second and say that I am a graduate of uh, a Pitt School of Engineering. I graduated with a degree in civil engineering, um, and I did maintain civil engineering throughout my career as a uh, as I helped with designs of uh, water wastewater treatment and desalination pretreatment systems uh, around the world. So I'm associated with the Czechoslovak Room Committee, which is one of the 31 nationality and heritage rooms that's at that are at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I am the, the chairperson, I guess I, I already said that, but um, my family goes back in history. My, my, both of my parents graduated from Pitt, but my grandfather uh, helped with the forming of, of the Czechoslovak room. And um, my father was a longtime chairman. He was chairman of the Czechoslovak room committee for over 40 years. And my mother was the driving force behind that. They were longtime committee members. And so I'm, I probably need to step back a little bit further and explain to you how the, the room committees and the rooms came about. Um, Chancellor Bowman at the time wanted to try to get the immigrant population that was in Pittsburgh, uh, which was my understanding is from 1890 to 1920, there were over 17 million immigrants that came to Western Pennsylvania seeking work in the steel mills, uh, coal mines and other factories that we had in Western Pennsylvania. He wanted to try and get them involved in the university. He was building the Cathedral of Learning. So he went to Ruth Crawford Mitchell um, at the time. I, I don't remember her exact position there, but she suggested to him that one of the ways to do this would be to try to uh, bring the culture of the immigrants because they are device, uh, diverse um, set, set of people and try and incorporate them into the university and by doing that, the nationality rooms. So nationality rooms are a, um, a description of the culture of that country or that heritage. But not only that, uh, they are also sponsors of scholarships. So once a room has been built, the committee uh, then converts over to developing the culture of the region um, and maintain that culture. Um, when a room is dedicated, a lot of people may not know this, that the room itself is frozen in time. We're not, not allowed to make any changes to the room. And that even goes to the name of the room. So if you know that the Czechoslovak room, there is no Czechoslovakia anymore. It's Czechia and Slovakia now, but we're not allowed to change the room. We're not allowed to change anything uh, within the room itself. So once, once the room has been dedicated, the committee converts over to sponsoring culture events, but also sponsoring scholarships. And these scholarships are for study abroad, uh, generally, they are for summer study, but I think the program is now going to expand into other types of scholarships for maybe long, longer term scholarships as well. So that's kind of a background of the um, of the room committees and how we function. And I would like to encourage every engineering student, if you want to study abroad, to look at our scholarships um, and apply for the scholarships. Some of them are country specific and some some of them are open up to um, to anywhere in the world. So. So thank you so much for all of that information. The National Anatomy Room Scholarships are an amazing student and would definitely also encourage all engineering students to apply to them. Um, now kind of moving into the global experiences, um, could you describe the global experiences that you've been able to have and describe the impact that they've had on your life? Um, okay, so I started traveling abroad my um, after I graduated from high school, before I started at Pitt, actually. Um, and I'll say that it was one, one eye-opening experience because I knew there was a world out there. I didn't really know uh, much about that world and, um, and their opinions. And we, we need to keep in mind that, sure, we're in the United States. We're the leader, but there are other people that also look up to us. And they have cultures and they have other types of experiences. And they have opinions and um, their opinions may be good of us. They may be uh, bad of us. 
Um, but I think that it's currently, it may be coming up more of a two-way street where we understand other cultures, but I, I still think that we as, as a nation do not understand the cultures of, of other countries and other areas of the world. And we need to be mindful of that. We, we need to know what's happening in other parts of the world because we're becoming uh, interdependent upon each other. So it was a really good experience. And further on in my career, I did more travel, um, but uh, it is really something else for you to, 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 for you to experience. So um, hopefully that answers that question. Yes, it was perfectly answered. And then kind of transitioning into more of an engineering setting, um, throughout your various different engineering roles in your career, why would you say it's important for engineers to go abroad? Well, um, I don't know if you know Thomas Friedman. He's an ec economist and, and a writer, but he published a book uh, titled The World is Flat. And um, I really believe this, that we are becoming, as I said, more independent, more interdependent upon each other. And um, we, we are opening up. We are um, uh, seeing other cultures and being interrelated to other cultures, and they're starting to affect us more. Uh, when you start out, you may or may not, um, if you started a large corporation, your supervisor or your colleagues may or may not be in the same time zone that you are, and they may not even be the same culture a, a, as you. And you need to be mindful of that because you don't want to get off on the wrong footing with them and you want to understand where they're coming from as well. And as you move on further in your career, you may be supervising people that are living in other countries and other cultures. So it's something as simple as a holiday. Um, we have our Thanksgiving, but the rest of the world doesn't have a Thanksgiving. We stop work, we don't work on a Thanksgiving, um, but the rest of the world doesn't stop. Uh, they have their holiday, so you need to be mindful of that. And there are other uh, kinds of traditions that you need to be mindful of. If you do travel to another culture, you're, you're a visitor there, and you should be mindful of, of who they are, what they do, um, and sensible to their kind of traditions and their cultures. There are certain things like, for instance, how you handle somebody else's business card. And business cards may be going to become passe. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but you, uh, this, some cultures, a business card is a reflection of that person and the, st and, and the stature and they are in their society. And you can't just take it and stuff it in your pocket or throw it away. You need to be mindful of that of that card because it is an extension of that person. It's just simple things like that. When you get into other cultures, you don't want to insult them because you are a visitor in their in their culture. Yes, thank you for um, providing those examples and really just diving into those cultural differences in in an engineering setting. Um, kind of going into more specifically your career um, in global sales support. How did you leverage your personal global experiences into this professional setting? Well, that, that's that's actually kind of an interesting question. <clears throat> I was fortunate because being in sales, <clears throat> we had to train uh, other people from other countries. So we would bring them into the Pittsburgh area and the Zillion Opal where our office was, and we would train them. Um, so we would get to know those kind of people or those people that when they came in. And what was interesting was then I would go visit their country. So I hosted them here in the United States, and then they would host me. In, in the uh, in their native uh, land, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it, so it, and it's really great to have somebody that's local in an area to be able to show you the sites, but not uh, not only that to tell you the customs and traditions that they have in their country. Um, and again, you 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 want to you're a visitor. You don't want to insult them, but you also need to to be able to do, to do business in that particular country. So again, I, I I'm I was kind of lucky in my career because I was able to um, have a guide and somebody that could tell me if I was about to do something that wasn't really proper. Uh, yeah, um, thank you so much for sharing that and, and for giving those examples again. It seems um, like you had a great experience kind of traveling and, and pursuing that role. Um, do you it's, have any advice? Oh, sorry, continue. That's okay. Um, it, 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 if you if you look at things and you observe, it, it's actually a, lo a lot of fun to see how other people do things. Um, they're different, but 
there's there's really more than one way to do something. So it's it's actually um, I found it very very fascinating. Yeah, what a great experience. Um, do you have any advice for engineering students that might be considering global experiences throughout their collegiate career? Well, from my perspective, I would encourage you to do it. It's it's just I think it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's, it's interesting. Um, some of the advice, uh, if you're going to go to another country, I always used to do this, um, especially if I hadn't been to that country before. I'd go online and see what I could find out in, in maybe 15 minutes to half an hour about that country. So sure, I would look at the weather because you want to know what you're getting into with the weather. And I'll tell you this, that it rains in the desert. I've been in Israel a couple of times and it was downpour, rainy, just raining a lot of rain that they weren't e e normally used to. So little things like that. Um, and it, it, if you can see, for instance, the language that, that they speak, uh, you may know the language, but you may not not know that there are other different dialects and other different things, along with customs and what they're doing. And as I said, holidays, uh, you should might want to look at their structure of their government. Um, if you're going to be uh, visiting with people they are going to know probably more about the United States than you're going to know about that particular country. Um, and that's just the way it is. We are a magnet for culture. People want to be like us. But then then when you start looking out into that other country, um, I think it, it, it would be good for you to look at their culture um, and try to understand what, you, what you're doing there. Um, another thing is that you're a guest in that country and what might be legal or acceptable in the United States may not be legal or acceptable in that particular country. So you need, need to be semi careful about what, what you do and how, how you handle yourself um, in, in a situation outside of the United States. So those are, those are a couple of things. Um, and again, if you're going to apply for a scholarship for, from the nationality rooms, I would highly recommend that you fill out the application as best as you can and as complete as possible. We normally do a, uh, a personal interview and we will talk to the candidates um, about what they expect to do and we would expect them to know a little bit about the country. So you would think that um, an applicant would want to know what language is spoken, what the monetary unit is in that, in that particular country, um, little things about the country because we will probably be asking those types of questions. Um, and one of the questions that we ask um, is, have you traveled abroad before? So that figures into our decisions as, as to uh, how we award scholarships as well. But I encourage any engineering student to try to travel abroad um, and apply for our scholarships. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for all of um, the help and information that you provided about the Nationality Rooms and their scholarships, as well as your own experiences abroad and how you've been able to transition those and leverage them in your professional career. So I can't thank you enough for all of the information that, that you have provided, and I'm sure it will help so many students that will be viewing this and, and will certainly be applying for the Nationality Room scholarships. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm happy if um, do you want me to answer any other questions? Um, and, and also, if students want to, want to ask the uh, nationality rooms, there are people within the rooms that will help them, guide them through the, the application process. And also, uh, we at the nationality rooms are more than happy to answer questions about the countries that we represent.